The Chinese are furious. Last week, Japan started releasing the water from Fukushima. Beijing says Tokyo has unleashed Godzilla. Not making this up. You have to watch this to believe it. With the rise of nuclear mushroom clouds woke up Godzilla. It is Japan's collective trauma of nuclear destruction. That is why the world was stunned when the traumatized country decided to dispose the nuclear contaminated water of Fukushima into the sea. How will it impact on food safety, on neighboring countries, and on the marine environment? What will it bring to our descendants? Japan is ready to make its own nuclear trauma a global nightmare. This is from a Chinese mouthpiece. China is getting creative with its propaganda online, but in the real world, Japanese citizens are being harassed. They're being threatened and abused on the phone. Japanese schools in China are being targeted. Stones and eggs have been thrown at their windows. Clearly, tensions are on the rise. It started last Thursday. That's when Japan started releasing radioactive water into the Pacific. We've been telling you about this, about the Fukushima nuclear power plant. It was wrecked by a tsunami in the year 2011. Huge waves of water flooded the nuclear plant. Nuclear fuel leaked into this water. The radioactive reactor shut down. More water was used to cool them down. This water became contaminated. It became radioactive. It was stored in tanks for all these years, since 2011. But now Tokyo is running out of storage space. We're talking about large quantities of water here, more than a million tons. More than enough to fill 500 Olympic swimming pools. This water was stored in more than 1,000 tanks. Japan decided to treat it, to remove all radioactive elements and dump the water into the ocean. The treated water still has some amount of tritium, which is a radioactive substance, but Japan says it's safe. Experts from the United Nations also say it's safe. Not everyone is convinced, though, especially China. Irrespective, Japan began releasing the water into the ocean last week, and China threw a fit. First, it went to the United Nations to protest. China and other stakeholders have repeatedly pointed out that if nuclear contaminated water is safe, then there is no need to discharge it into the sea. If it is not safe, it should not be discharged. China did not get the support it hoped for. The UN maintains the water is fit for release, so Beijing adopted a different strategy. It targeted Japan directly. First, China inflicted economic damage. It imposed a sweeping ban on Japanese seafood. China says Japanese seafood could be contaminated. There is no scientific basis to this claim. But Chinese mouthpieces are amplifying it anyway. They're running scathing editorials. They're publishing provocative posts, like that Godzilla video we just showed you. And this one, a cartoon from the Global Times. Japan does not find it funny, of course. Chinese social media is boosting Beijing's accusations. They're making more unsubstantiated claims, like this one. Apparently, these are Chinese fish sellers, and they're really upset. Pretty dramatic. What are they so angry about? They're complaining about Japan's move. They think... Their fish is contaminated. Again, none of this is backed by science or any credible explanation for that matter. Experts say such fears are irrational, but China is adding fuel to this fire. Their verbal attacks have taken an ugly turn. People in Japan are receiving threatening phone calls. These calls come from Chinese numbers. And who is the target of this phone campaign? There's a long list. Local businesses, schools, government departments, and in one case, even an aquarium. The callers speak in Mandarin, Japanese, and English. In many cases, they abuse the person on the other side. There have been so many phone calls that the businesses say they're struggling to operate. Finally, Tokyo has escalated the matter. It summoned the Chinese ambassador, but the harassment continues. Japanese establishments in China are also getting threatening phone calls. Today, Tokyo made its complaints public. It demanded action from Beijing. A lot of harassment phone calls regarding the Fukushima water release, believed to be originating from China, are occurring in Japan. Many similar cases are occurring at related facilities in China. 
These developments are extremely regrettable and we are concerned. They have good reason to be worried because in some cases, this protest has turned violent. Japan had to warn its citizens in China. They have been advised to avoid speaking Japanese loudly and to stay away from any Fukushima-related demonstrations. There is a travel advisory too. If you're Japanese and you're visiting China, Tokyo wants you to leave your contact numbers and itinerary with family, friends and employers at home. Japan is worried about the security of its people and not without reason. Like we told you, Japanese schools in China have been targeted. Stones were hurled at a school in Qingdao. Last week, eggs were thrown at another school in the Suzhou city. These are legitimate security concerns. And what is China's response to Japan? More lectures. The first thing I would like to tell you is that China has always safeguarded the safety and legitimate rights and interests of foreigners in China in accordance with the law. I would also like to stress that the government of Japan has unilaterally and forcibly initiated the discharge of contaminated water from the Fukushima nuclear accident in defiance of the strong doubts and objections of the international community. Neighboring countries and the international community have been generally critical of this self-serving and highly responsible behavior by the government of Japan and have taken preventive measures accordingly. He barely said anything about the security of Japanese nationals. Instead, China keeps complaining about Fukushima. But these allegations reek of hypocrisy, and I'll tell you why I say this. Chinese nuclear plants do the very same thing. They dumped wastewater into the ocean. In fact, China has released six and a half times more wastewater than what Japan plans to. So what is the fuss all about? It's not about science or safety. This is about politics. China wants to settle scores with Japan for its support to Taiwan, for the drills in South China Sea, and for its alliance with the US. China's ultimate goal is to build pressure on Japan to influence policy changes, to make Tokyo bend to its will. It may not happen. And China's tactics are a nuisance in the best case scenario. In the worst, they could lead to dangerous outcomes.